ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles and cousins, of course, and abuelas or abuelos and nanas and papas and baseball fans everywhere. Welcome to this edition of the Valley Baseball League podcast. For those of you who have your calendar out, it's Friday, June 28th, 2019. I know you're looking at through watch going, what are these guys saying? That was last year. Well, yeah, you're right. It was last year. We're doing a retrospective look at 2019. We're calling it the 2020 Rewind season. Anyway, why are we doing that? We're doing that because we don't have any baseball to play, and we are all in need of some serious baseball. So what do we do at the Valley League? Well, if you're Aaron Jordan or I, you go back and you look at last year. But if you're John Leonard, you go back and you look at June 28th for seven years, and you recap all seven years. How cool is that? If you want to take part in that, all you got to do is go to the Valley Baseball League's page. For some reason, our URL is Valley League Baseball as opposed to Valley Baseball League. But anyway, go to Valley League Baseball, and in the upper right-hand corner, uh, there's a little thing that says 2019 Annual. It's really great stuff. I mean, lots of detail about the games. We're sharing some of it here with you in these uh, 2020 Rewind seasons. But highly encourage you, if you need a baseball fix, to check out that annual. Uh, you can also get up early and watch the Korean League. Hopefully, Major League Baseball will get it together, and you'll be able to check it out there. But if you're needing to connect with baseball and you're interested in helping out the Valley League in particular or one of your favorite teams, please reach out to your team and buy some of their merchandise. Uh, I'm wearing the uh, Front Royal uh, red tonight. Uh, very soon, I'll have a Front Royal shirt, and I'll be able to show you Front Royal as opposed to Valley League. But also happy to show you uh, Winchester, Percival, Charlottesville, Stan. It doesn't matter. Uh, these teams incur costs all year round. Um, as you know, they were expecting to have some revenue coming in with the season starting. Unfortunately, that's not happening. But that doesn't mean the bills are stopping. Uh, so they could definitely use your help. Reach out to your favorite team. Uh, buy a shirt. Buy a hat. They're really pretty cool. Check that out. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's kind of styling. Uh, let's just check this out. Let's go for the catwalk. I'm on the catwalk, Aaron. What do you think? I'm coming down the runway. I got on my little skull cap. I know it's got like a bill back there, but let's just pretend I'm walking down. You see gateway to the majors. Are you thinking 10? What kind of score are you giving me walking down the catwalk there with my cool value? I, will, I will only give you a 10 if you flip the, the hat around while you're walking so we can see the, the front of it too. Oh, she likes to see the bill part. Right on. It doesn't work we so gotta well see what it looks like. That's how uh, you really sell something. Is that better? You guys like that? What do you guys think, Jordan? Where are you I on mean, the hat, man? Are you? You got your Cubs hat going backwards. He's got his backwards. I get for this, it needs to be backwards because it does cast a shadow. But I gotta show cool all of it if you're trying somewhere. to sell it. All right, everybody, there you go. And you get a cool <laughs> forty-seven thing. I'm not sure which side it's on. It's definitely not on that one. Look at that. You get a cool little 47 thing, right? It was definitely on the fun. other one, but that's Oh, fine. is that where it is? <laughs> well, anyway, there you go. Enough about merchandise. The league and the teams in this league could definitely use your help and support. So reach out to them. If you don't know who to reach out to, reach out to me. I will help you find a team that would welcome your help with open arms. But anyway, enough about them for now. Let's talk baseball. We had three games last um, year at this time on the 28th of June. Uh, Jordan, what is our game of the night? Yeah, Graham, you know what? We've got a great one tonight between the Front Royal Cardinals and the Winchester Royals. And I know that we usually try to be as discreet as possible, not really give away so many details. I got to make an exception for tonight because John Leonard's pitcher of the day, this is a game that should be held in such high regard. You're looking at possibly player of the week, player of a month, if such awards exist. But you're looking at Mr. Shane Scott, sir, wherever you are, have a day and take a bow because a 114 pitch complete game shutout is what he is going to be bringing you tonight in a front Royal Cardinals jersey. It, this is a fantastic game uh, by this young man tonight. His offense, of course, six-run cushion is great, but 114 pitches and with those pitches, He's going to only allow five hits, surrender only one walk, and he's got seven strikeouts on the night. We haven't seen a complete game shutout by one player in the Valley League since July 15th of 2018. Graham, this is a heck of a performance tonight. Yeah, I'm always thrilled about this. You know, and uh, we talked about this a little bit in uh, our a game of the night last week or last night when we talked about pitch counts and you know to pull this off really takes a lot 
for one, you've got to have the um, permission from the school that the pitcher can go that deep. Uh, for two, you know, you got to be able to do all of that stuff. I'm constantly fascinated by the contrast that a, a Roberto Hernandez sets where it's like you get the ball and you're going to go as long as you can with it versus, you know, these pitch counts sometimes can be 40, 50, 60, and that's it. And uh, the, the coaches from these college teams will pull these players. Uh, they'll be in the league for a little bit, and then they're, they hit their pitch counts, and they're done. Um, so to see a, a player step up, be able to deliver that many pitches, and with that kind of result, you know, that to me is just a rarity and welcome. And, you know, as you all know, I'm on the Winchester board, so it's super exciting to see the Winchester Royals have this kind of moment. We had a new coach last year, uh, put together clearly a, a great team with Jimmy and um, with this pitching staff, so really exciting to see the Royals kind of step up and be able to pull this one off. Um, all right, Aaron, what else happened in the league back on this day? Well, we have the hitter of the day. We had the pitcher of the day, obviously, with Shane Scott. We had the hitter of the day, Wes Clark, who comes out of Waynesboro. There's a Waynesboro-Covington matchup. The Generals won their fifth game in a row. I know I'm repeating myself. It was four games last night, fifth game today. This one had 13 hits and 15 runs scored. So they had runs scored in every inning except for two. The Generals really on a roll here, much thanks to the hitter of the day, Wes Clark. He was the only hitter with more than one extra base hit. So maybe they kind of did it with a little small ball action, which is pretty interesting, or lots of singles. Wes went 2 of 4 last night. He had three runs, two doubles, a walk, two RBIs. He's now hitting nearly 400 at 397 and has had has hit double figures in runs, RBIs, walks, and doubles, which is pretty incredible. I mean, he's doing extremely well, and that's helping Waynesboro to lead the South Division now. Yeah, you know, and I, I've mentioned this before in the past, just super um, fascinated with kind of uh, Zach Cole's team building skills. Uh, clearly, uh, you know, he'd been in the league for three years uh, with the New Market Rebels. This is his first year with the Generals. He, he knows something, uh, which we shared a little bit of in the podcast we did with him, but he knows something about team building, and he really got this team invested, uh, and they just lit it up. Um, all right, Jordan, you have the last game uh, from 2019, or does Aaron have it? I think you do, Jordan. You look like you got that. I got this game, and I'm sharing. Is that, is that that look? It's the look. It's not the last game of uh, 2019, but it is the last day uh, of – it is the last game of the day, excuse me, uh, that we haven't gone over yet, and that's between the Percival Cannons and the New Market Rebels. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but the Percival Cannons, they've been 500 the past two weeks on the schedule. They've gone 7-7 seven and seven after starting 1-7 and seven to open up their season. So now they're at 8-14. and 14. So proud of these guys really turning their season around, and it's fantastic the way they've been doing it. The pitching has been there. The batting has been there. This game in particular really got to give credit to two uh, pitchers in particular, and that would be Blaze Pontes and Jacob Matos. Zero hits in seven shutout innings from these two gentlemen, um, and back-to-back three-run innings to open the game for Percival on offense. Uh, in particular, uh, there was a Walt Richardson double. That's going to bring in those key fifth and sixth runs. But it's amazing the kind of turnaround that the Percival Cannons have had. Got to say it again, but the Cannons are roaring right now. They get yet another one, eight to five grand. Talk about a turnaround. You know, we're going to have to turn this into a Drake game or something. Every time Jordan says the Cannons are roaring, you know, we'll all have to do a shot or something. I just – I get the uh, feeling that's just kind of going to be a trend. Colleges around the country will be – playing the cannons or roaring game for you know semesters to come that's so funny i really do enjoy that i do on one sad note i do want to do one last uh royals kind of low light jimmy goldsmith came into this league and was hitting you know just outrageous baseballs i mean he was just crushing it and somewhere around this time i'll have to go look up the exact date he came into a game i think he was still hitting around just under 700 uh, he, I was up at bat, I think it was his second at bat, and he gets hit in the hand like three times in the same game. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a little bit later in the season, he was fielding a ball, took a bad bounce and split his finger open. And something else, that poor guy came in and was just crushing it and having such a great season. Uh, but injuries took him out of 
uh, the league, uh, unfortunately. And it's just kind of a heartache as I, you know, we get deeper into June. I can't help but cringe a little bit thinking about what a great season he was having and kind of wish I would have known how it would have ended up if it hadn't been for a few straight pitches and one bad bounce. Um, but that is baseball. Um, any other thoughts to share before we wrap this up and uh, ask people to join us again next time? All right, baseball fans, hopefully um, you're getting a kick out of this. We're going to give you one last shout out. If you like what we're doing here, let us know. If you want to see uh, the games in total, uh, we've got the link below in the description. And uh, if you want us to change these rewinds, uh, make them longer, you want to see some different stuff in them, please let us know. We welcome your comments. Uh, we are doing this so that we can let baseball fans everywhere know what happens in the Valley League. But we're also doing this to help you get your sports fix during these uh, kind of low, um, low velocity sports times. How about that? Um, anyway, until next time, for Aaron and Jordan, I want to wish you all perfect health, and I want to wish you all a speedy return to the baseball diamond. We'll see you again tomorrow night for another Rewind game here on the Valley Baseball League's YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Bing Crosby Stadium for a matchup between the Front Row Cardinals and the Winchester Royals. I'm Jackson Arnold, and I'll be your play-by-play -play announcer tonight leading hitter on the team as he takes strike three on the corner looking it's not a normal color man for a red team as two two gets him on a strikeout looking for out number two a five from five game I believe early in the year as he swings and misses on that one it's not a bad running here as he Hit and run is executed perfectly. And the Cardinals by Bell. will score. And the Cardinals will score for the first run of the game. And the 1 2. Gets him swinging and a miss for a strikeout. I believe that's the second of the night. Absolutely. But you want to keep him guessing. And he swings and miss on what seems to be maybe a changeup or an arm side run set of pitch as. That is the second out of the bottom of the four in a couple years back, being one of the better players during the All-Star game for this Cardinals. As that ball is roped in the deep center field. Back, back and it's and gone. It's gone. <laughs> that is a home run for Matt Cooper. <laughs> Eastman Waterman looks to stay alive here with the 0-2. And a swing and a miss on what seemed to be something, something upstairs that Eastman Waterman tried to put over the net again. His senior didn't have a single strikeout in 96 at bats as he swings and misses on that good on that curveball by Scott for the first out of this inning. Scott will deliver the 0-2, and it will be a big swing and a miss for the second out of the inning. Runners in scoring position with Baggett on third and then Hennett on second base. Look to maybe pull the ball here. As the ball is smoked up the middle that for will score. Oh, then Hennett looks to go as the center fielder bobbles it and that will score two, making the score four to nothing, Cardinals. And that is a single by Trey Fields. Make up for it. Uh, offensive side and the ball misses for and Christian will walk in a run with Patrick Baggett on four pitches and the 2-2 from Christian to Fields delivered and hit to the shortstop who oh. flips the ball to Bergreen who throws Bergreen flips the ball to Barnett who throws the ball to Goldsmith for the double play but allows a run to score And the 3 2 is swung on and missed for a strikeout as Topper strikes him out, strikes Hernandez out for the second out of the inning. He's already gone eight in the third. As he gets a swing and a miss for out number two for a strikeout to Barnett, his second strikeout to Barnett of the night. Scott working out of the windup for most of the game with a little bit of 1 1. That ball is grounded to Dylan Menhennett, possibly ending the game, and it will. And that is nine innings by Shane Scott. A phenomenal performance.